All right guys, it's time to winterize the lawn sprinklers. Now, if you're gonna be getting into this lawn care stuff, I'd suggest doing it yourself, um, but there's a lot of companies out there that, that will definitely be happy to charge you to do it for you. Um, the things you're gonna need is you're gonna need a compressor, the tube, and then somewhere around here I got, oh boy, I hope I didn't lose it. So I searched everywhere, can't find the adapter. Uh, but never fear, this is where being part of a local Facebook group for lawn care fans or whatever you want to call it uh, comes in helpful because Gary's coming over with his adapter. It's still, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that he's bringing his, but it still is driving me nuts because I've literally had the blue tubing over there for an entire year with the adapter in the middle of it and now I can't find it and it's just driving me insane but anyways I'll get to talk to a friend and uh yeah let's just so we got this the adapter will go on here and I'll connect over to the uh sprinkler system it's like a hose spigot and you can blow it out it's really easy so we get everything ready so when he's here we can just have at it. it just drives me nuts all right so let's talk about compressors now this one you can see it's five cubic feet per minute they say you're supposed to be up around like 10 or 15 it's not about the psi the psi does not matter if you do 90 or 135 psi you can easily break sprinkler heads so what you gotta think about is all the water that's in the the lines is like this and you need enough flow to push it all out in one go um, if you do little bits and pieces then essentially the uh, the top layer can get filled with air and the air could travel across the top and it doesn't have the the pressure now I do I did get into a little debate with uh, some of the guys in the Facebook group because they they're using those pancake um, compressors personally I don't recommend that um, I think you know this seems to do fine but I wouldn't go with anything smaller um, if you you get too small you can have some um, you know water still on the lines but I mean if we're we're doing it ourselves um, the worst case scenario you get one of those cool lawn bubbles look at that that's awesome and you gotta fix a sprinkler line and you get to do it and it doesn't it doesn't really cost that much um, but it's one of those things where I'm not gonna recommend that you do it a certain way because I am unsure that it will be safe to do it without destruction um, it also depends a lot on your yard size the way the system is you know from from here you can see we're at the top part of the yard it's all downhill so it's gonna use a lot less air to do it but if you're trying to push the water up a hill that's gonna have another uh, a effect on it and everything so you just you don't want to wait which way is the sun oh there we go you don't want to um, do too small of a compressor I am a fan of um, hiring it the first couple times if you're you new to sprinkler systems or you just moved into one with it just so you can watch and see what they do um, it's also helpful because uh, you can you can get like a uh, I'm losing my train of thought here you can get an idea of how long it takes them to do it with their big powerful compressor and so this guy here for my yard um, it takes about the same amount of time as it took them to do it so I know it's got enough flow for my yard um, but once again you know just just use use some common sense and uh, I mean if you if you got to do it with a smaller compressor you're gonna have to go over each line a few times and um, try to pay attention to the sounds and the amount of water coming out uh, something else you can do since I got time to talk 
a buddy of mine, his yard was so big, even when the pros came, uh, they had to do this. They would find all the sprinkler heads, get a really large rock. I think there's one like over here. They just put the rock right on top of it and they do it to all the sprinkler heads so they could take one off at a time. And they did that because the yard was just so big, they weren't gonna get enough flow to make all the lines go all the way out. So there's some tips. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in. Now, because it's a big one, um, I actually have a heavy duty extension cord going to a certain outlet in the house. Otherwise, it's gonna turn the TV off if I plug it in to the outside outlet. Now, for security purposes, I uh, bend the prongs so that the kids can't plug it in. Just kidding. Um, see. <laughs> see, you got up to its max PSI, which is 135. But here, I got a below 50. So that'll give me enough uh, pressure to get the water out. But also, because the tank's full of air, it's gonna have some more volume. And uh, usually, before this gets down to 50 PSI, it will kick on, and it's usually enough time where it stays at 50 PSI the entire uh, time. So I'm able to do a zone before it runs out. Um, so where you can run into issues is if your compressor runs out of oomph, of pressure, of airflow before the zone's done, then you cut it off to let it recharge, that water can flush back. Um, and this isn't, you know, you know, I'm not some scientific person. I don't know uh, what kind of proof they have. This is what they say, experts. So um, it could be, you know, a pitch to get you guys to pay someone to do it. I don't know, but it's one of those things where I'm gonna tell you because um, if you mess up your sprinkler system trying to do it with an under uh, an inadequate compressor, then you know you can't blame me for warning you. So, uh, but I am of the type who will try things that's not possible um, and see for myself. So um, feel free to do that. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could do it yourself with a pancake. Uh, compressor and then hire the company to come out and do it and see for yourself if theirs pushes any more water out. I mean, it's actually not a terrible idea. So ah, there you go. So if you do do that, record it and uh, we'll have a video and I'll share it. So there you go. All right. So this year, well, I've already unplugged the sprinkler controller. So I'm going to do it the manual way. And that's by pulling up the zones, the boxes, you can see they're wet. So you're just twisting these and I'll say right on it. Of course that one's dirty. On, off. So you just twist it till it's on. It'll let the, the water blow through and you're good to go. Of course these aren't numbered, so. Oh, yeah, they're not numbered. And one of the sprinklers is right here, so I'm gonna get wet. But, oh well. Just have to make sure the sprinkler, or not the sprinkler, the camera's back far enough. All right, here we go. We got the adapter. So I've already turned off the water inside the house and I've opened that valve to drain some of the water out there. I have the adapter valve set to close so when I plug it in I can slowly open it and not have a jolt of pressure go through there uh, just to make sure things don't um, break. I've always used the controller so I have no idea like I would assume this one's the first one, but I have no idea, so it might be this one. Wait, you want to see me run <laughs> Oh, that is the first one. All right, you can see that one over there, it's spraying a lot of water. The ones over here starting to turn into more of a mist. Way down there is still water. Let's 
is recording. Okay, good. Well, you can see this PSI is still 100. That's less than 50, but that's all right. Seems to be doing okay. Probably. Assess this one. Let's check the PSI. I did adjust the PSI up a little bit to get it to stay near 50. This is about to turn on soon. This is the longest run. See, it's doing pretty good. The water's coming out. Similar to how it would be if it was just water, not air, but we gotta get this down to air. Should be kicking on soon. Unless it tripped the breaker. So I did trip the breaker and I ended up plugging it in and it worked a lot better. It was much faster. Uh, because of the tank size and the pressure and everything, it actually did pretty well without uh, running. Uh, but it does go a lot quicker when it kicks on correctly. And essentially what you're looking for is the sprinkler heads to start spinning quicker um, because that's when it's just air. If it starts spinning super fast, like you're doing a lot of high pressure, it'll actually spin much faster than normal, um, and you can melt the sprinkler heads that way. Uh, but that's just what you're looking for. You don't want to see water coming out. You want to see uh, basically just air. If you like my videos, you'll love my website, grassdaddy.net. The Lawn Care Planner tool will download the local weather reports every morning and build a lawn care plan catered to your area. The Lawn Care Journal allows you to keep track of what you put down, when you put it down, so there's no more guessing or over or under applying any products. We also have a Lawn of the Week contest. Every week a winner gets a Grass Daddy t-shirt. And last but not least, there are application calculators and articles to help you identify and tackle problems in the lawn. So check it out. It's completely free. It's grassdaddy.net.